but, but realize this, you're determining your validation for your significance today, and that'll qualify you for your platform tomorrow. So I'm not trying to use big words. I'm just trying to give you. So we live a life where we want to be validated. And that validation determines for us is if we're significant or not. Your validation determines your significance, and that's when you feel confident. I'm somebody. Now, some of y'all try to get respect among fools, and it may be based on what the fellas say. Uh, some people is based on what your, your, your big brother, your big sister, your parents say. Uh, some of it is based on what everybody in the school says. But, but where you determine what validates you as significant determines what type of triumph you're going to have. See, so imagine if your, your, your validation or your significance is, is God is pleased with you. Yeah, because the scripture says in Hebrews eleven six, without faith is impossible to please God. Amen. So if my significance is God is pleased. No, fellas might not be pleased. Parents might not be pleased. Cousin might not be pleased. The school might not be pleased. But God is pleased. That means I'm walking by faith and not by sight because without faith is impossible to please God. But let's say if everybody else is my significance, I cannot even be faithful and feel like I'm validated. But I could be selling myself short on that platform that I ultimately is going to fulfill me because God designed me. Right. Right. So. So. So that's important. So we I'm trying to finish up from last week so I can give you what I have for you this week. So we also said that that wilderness period is aware is a place where you're aware. Remember. So you'll really know what's in your heart, because a lot of times I remember I, I was over a bunch of ministers and deacons at our last church. And so we had this. Uh, a ministry training track. And so part of the training track was you, of course, you went through ministry school, but then you also had to participate in children's ministry yeah, because you develop compassion when you, spend, when you spend time with children, whether you realize it or not, because they don't know. So how are you going to get mad at them? Yeah. Right. Then uh, you had to spend some time with youth. Uh, you pick up, a, you, you learn a lot of discernment working with youth because youth have a way of fronting all the time. So, so you, you have to be able to discern that they didn't, they, they're not tripping. They're just afraid to come out and be real, right? And then uh, hospital visits and, and different things of that nature. When we did our ordination, some people didn't get ordained. And so God come to my office. Well, I feel, I feel like I got overlooked. I believe I got overlooked. I was like, seriously, you got overlooked. So I had a chart. You know, I'm a, again, I'm a math guy, so I'm real exhausted. So the chart... It was a graph. It had colors. So the colors were the, were the things you did. If you didn't do nothing, there was no colors. So I just whipped out the chart. I said, now, um, the colors are the, 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 the things you participated in and the class you took. And the blank spots are what you didn't do. Is that your name? Yes. Are there many colors? <laughs> no. Now, explain to me how you think you overlooked. Did you take these classes and we forgot to give you colors, or did you go through these assignments? Oh, no, I didn't do the assignments. I said, so what was in your mind that had you thinking you got played? Like, why are you worked up right now? Are, are you not aware of your everyday actions? Isn't this the requirement? Yes. Did you meet the requirements? No. So help me out. What is, where's your expectation coming from? You know, proximity, longevity. I, I hung around for at least two years. I might not have did anything, but I was around for at least two years. I went to class for two years. I just didn't take none of the, I didn't study. I didn't pass. I didn't, take, I didn't take none of the tests. But I was there. Some good conversation you guys was having in that class. And so, so where do you, why do you believe you should be released and approved? When you go to God and you go, well, God, what's wrong with you? Why didn't you give that to me? God is saying, okay, is that you? Is that your name? Did you fulfill the assignment? Did you go to class? Was you at service? Was you at the training class? Did you learn? Did you embrace the preparation for your purpose? So you go, well, no, sir. So now explain to me why you're upset with me. Why would I put you in harm's way? Okay, so, so you say you want to be a doctor. So you go to class 
But after that, you have residency. But you're like, residency, man, I already got my degree. I'm not going to no residency, no internship. I ain't doing none of that. So now it's time to perform a surgery. But you can't. But you want me to sign off as you, you're a doctor. But I'm going to put you in harm's way. Do you realize you could cost somebody's life? Actually, you, you know how, like, you know, you, some of y'all might do this. You get through school and somebody else take your test? Or they take tests before you and you call them up and say, now, what's the answers to such and such? So you really don't know the information. They've taken the test, right? You don't know the information. They've taken the test. Now, you know you can't do that as a doctor? Because you actually have to know what you're doing. You can't fake that. Okay, I think this is the... Okay, well, you got an artery over here. You got a blood vessel. It's one of the two. Eh, I'll just clip this one. Uh, I'm sorry that they didn't make it. Yeah, they didn't make it. We did everything that we could. And the person goes, wow, you know, doctors, they normally do what they could. They just didn't make it. No, they just killed your, your person. They killed the person. Because they didn't know. You know, it's the same thing for ministry. I was a dean over a ministry school. I was like, I don't think I understand. I'm not in here trying to trick you. So it's not about I know stuff, y'all don't. Man, he's a hard professor. And then you walk out and didn't learn nothing and go, man, he tough, he tough. No, no, I don't want to be tough. You need to absorb the information because somebody's life is on the line. You can't be acting like you know. So this is serious. As, as, as a disciple, you got to know. Somebody's, you're saying stuff to people with confidence out of your fears. <laughs> like, like, I don't know, that's not even important, man. You know, I just do that moderately. What's the big deal? You know, it don't take all that, you know. Hey, listen, God understands. God knows your heart. You're throwing all these little lines out, and then later on you wake up to find the truth. But that person's been living off of your lie. Amen. Amen. But you think because, well, I mean, what, big, what, what difference does it make? Everybody you have access to should have a level of truth from where you are. Regardless of who you are. All right, so anyway, you probably didn't necessarily want to hear that, but it's the truth. All right, so, so it, when, we're, when we're in the wilderness, there's a, there's a place for us to know ourselves. Because we use this line all the time, God knows my heart. So Deuteronomy 8, too. So you would know what's in your heart, but we say God knows my heart. And, you know, I always say, exactly. But do you know your heart? Because we go... God knows my heart. Like you say it like with a, with with a, with, a, with your chest out, you know. God knows my heart, or, or what's the line? Uh, uh, don't judge me. God knows my heart. You know. Stop. Stop. Just stop. Because just stop. Don't ever use that line. Don't judge me no more. If you really don't know what it means, because that's passing sentence. If you if you're doing something lazy and a person assesses that as, as lazy. That's not passing sentence. They're not saying why you're being lazy. You're being lazy because you want to be a bum. Okay, now that's judging you. But somebody saying you lazy and you being lazy, you lazy. Go to court. Oh, he slapped that woman. Yeah, yeah. Because they saw you smack him. Now, if they said you smacked him because you were trying to kill him, that's passing sentence. The judge does that. You see what I'm saying? So stop. Don't, don't use that line no more. And God knows my heart. Yes, you can use that line. It's true, but use it in the context of what it means. God knows your heart. That doesn't mean you do. Because if you knew your heart, you would understand why you're struggling. Because of your heart. Not everybody else, your heart. Oh, does this sound a little edgy? You said, yeah. <laughs> okay, let me, let, me, let, me, let me water it down, take the edge off. <laughs> I wasn't going to change. I was just playing. I wasn't going to change. Because I got to yield. All right, so, so during this wilderness, you cultivate. It's, it's a time where God will take away all the things you may normally depend on, all your little safeguards. So you would have to cult cultivate a relationship with him. It's all about him. And you know how you be on a roll? Like everything is rolling, and then all of a sudden wilderness show up. And you're like, there's something definitely wrong here. 
This Ken Pratt, no, 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 I'm going to church, I'm reading the Bible, I even fasted for three weeks in a row, so wilderness couldn't possibly roll up on me. Well, why not? Listen, after Jesus had his greatest level of endorsement, Jesus, remember we did the baptism yesterday, uh, we, we got to give y'all baptism certificates later, but we did the baptism and, and come up out of the water and the Holy Spirit falls on him like a dove and God said, this is my son who I'm well pleased. God! God took his powerful voice from heaven to make sure everybody around knew this is my son who I'm well pleased. He, that's significance. That's a whole nother level right there. So imagine if that was us because some of us rest with success in here. So God shows up. This is my son who I'm well pleased. Oh, no, I'm with him. He rolling with me. So what do you think Jesus initially is thinking? What? What? What was you saying last week about me? <laughs> God said he with you? It says in the next moment. So, so between uh, Matthew 3 verse 17 and Matthew 4 verse 1, in the next verse, I don't know how much time took place, but it wasn't long, it says immediately he was taken to the wilderness. After his greatest success, he was taken to the wilderness because God wasn't finished. God was like, no, 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 no rest with success. We got to get to fulfillment. Amen. It said in Luke chapter, uh, uh, I believe it's 14 or 4, verse 1, it says he, 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 came, uh, he came in the, the power of the spirit to the wilderness. When he came out of the wilderness after he was tested, it says he was full with power. See, because I wasn't just, he said, okay, now you ready. So the success is you ready. I'm pleased. Okay, I'm pleased. So, so you were called. You're now chosen. Now let me fill you up. I want you to cross over into fulfillment. See, and that's the tough part. We get a little, little bit of success. That, that, are you kidding? God has much more than that. And he's like, can I get anybody to be filled with my fullness? I got so much more. No, no, what's, that went nothing. Like, can I fill somebody up? I want to access you to a point where I flood you and you pour out into everybody. Amen. Can I do that? God says, I have very few people that are allowing me to fill them up. Ephesians uh, 3.19, be filled with the fullness of God. So we're just happy that we quote scriptures. Those of us that quote scriptures. Some of us happy that I said God today. Jesus three times this month. Yeah, I said Jesus. Or, or I, did, I did one of those. <laughs> I give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Whew, got that out the way. Now I can live like I want to live. I'm positive. I'm at church every Sunday. Are you pouring out what's being poured into you Every day. <laughs> you see, like, it's, it's bigger than that. I'm excited. Yeah, if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't have been able to do this. Okay, is the God that's equipped you to do that, are you allowing him to fill you up to assist somebody else to do it? See? So, so okay, anyway, y'all. Don't look like y'all excited about that revelation. Okay, okay. See if we can come up with something more exciting. <laughs> Things seem like people was a little too th thrilled about that. All right, so so again, look at even Moses and uh, Moses went through a forty-year process. Joseph went through it was like thirteen, seventeen years. Here, are these. Thanks for tuning into Airs TV. The completion of this video or entire audio can be accessed at our website at www.heirscc.org or on Airs CCC channel, YouTube, and Airs Radio via SoundCloud and iTunes. Donations can be given at our website. Thank you. Remember, at Airs, we believe we're just what you prayed for.